We can change our lives at any moment. That's why I've never been a fan of New Year's resolutions. After all, what's so magical about this date January 1st? That said, these last few months, I've been working to challenge some of my long held assumptions to see if I still agree with them, to see if they still serve me. This year, I'm challenging my thought that New Year's resolutions are overrated and unnecessary. The way that I'm doing this is by setting 13 ways that I'm going to change my life in 2022. I suppose that I'm setting 13 resolutions for the upcoming year. The only difference between this and a regular New Year's resolution is that I'm deciding to start today. I'm not going to delay. I'm not going to wait till the new year. I'm starting right now. So grab a drink. I have a protein shake here and let's get into it. So good. The first thing on my list is to stop checking on things so often. Throughout my day, I check on stuff all the time from Instagram to Twitter, to my email, to ESPN, another round of Twitter. Have there been any more emails that have come in? Maybe a little bit more Instagram, even going to find friends to be able to see the location of my closest friends for absolutely no reason at all. But after reading Darius Froh's book, Do It Today, I realized the danger of doing this. He poses this question, what is the point of all of the checking? How have we actually changed from before the time we checked to afterwards? And when I thought about my own life, the answer was, I haven't in any meaningful way. All that I did was consume information that was rarely, if ever, actionable. And in addition to that, it's not just that that act is harmless, usually it's actually detrimental to what I'm able to get done in a day. Because whenever I check on things, it's often to be able to distract myself from a task that I'm entrenched in, something where I'm not comfortable because I have to put so much focus into the thing, so I go for the brain candy. And then after that, I then have to use mental energy to get back into the flow, to get back into that actual process. Overall, not great. So the solution that I set out that I'm going to start implementing is to set three 15 minute periods a day where I can check on whatever I want. There's no rules, there's no restrictions. But once that timer goes off for the 15 minutes, even if I'm in the middle of something like watching a video, it's time to get back to work. So we'll see how this one goes. The second task is that I'm going to start responding to my loved ones within 48 hours. I've been guilty many, many, many times in the past of leaving messages unanswered for weeks or even months at a time. I would tell myself that I was busy, maybe I was traveling a lot, but the reality is there's no reason, there's no excuse for me to not respond to the people that I say mean the most to me within a few days, especially with the ease of communication these days. Now, I'm not saying that I'm gonna get down to inbox zero or that I'm going to respond immediately as soon as somebody sends something to me because I don't think that those two methods are necessarily that effective. If I did so, I'd be spending so much of life simply being reactive to the messages that other people send instead of getting into deep work. But there's absolutely no reason why I cannot give a response within two days. That response, if things really are quite hectic, can be, hey friend, I got your message, I'll get you a longer response in a little bit, but at least they'll know that they're not being ignored because I know from personal experience that that is not the most pleasant experience. Number three is that I'm going to stop being late. Now, I was raised on Filipino time, but I know that I've used that as an excuse for far too long, essentially my entire life. It is completely within my control whether or not I show up on time for a thing. So part of the reason for this change is to respect other people's time, which is something that I do not do whenever I show up late. However, that's only part of the equation. The main reason I'm doing this is more selfish. The way that I view it, whenever I show up late to something, it's because I'm disorganized in my mind, which then translates to the actions that I take. However, by implementing this rule of not being late and by actually following through on it, I'm going to be building this structure. I'm going to be building this organization in my life that will then translate to all other parts. So friends, please do hold me responsible for this one over this upcoming year. The fourth change is that I'm going to start eating vegetables every single day. Now, in the past, I've tinkered with this idea of going vegetarian or going vegan, partly because I know the vegetables are good for me, partly because I feel this guilt at times whenever I think about the meat industry, and partly just to see what that experience would be like. But I don't really know why I had that stretch goal. Okay, I do know why I had the stretch goal is because it sounded cool to be able to say I went vegetarian or I went vegan, but that is like trying to sprint before I even got up to start crawling because I don't eat vegetables all that often. 
Besides the time whenever I was a baby eating baby food, I'm not sure that there's been even 10 days in a row where I've eaten a serving of vegetables every single day. Right now I'm in what I think is the longest streak that I've ever had and today's only day eight and it hasn't actually been all that easy to get to this point. So instead of setting this large goal to be able to tell other people that I am this, I'm going to set a much more modest goal because some progress is better than none at all. My only goal when it comes to vegetables is to eat one serving a day, only one serving a day, every single day for the upcoming year. Number five is that I'm going to stop buying frivolous things. Now I love buying stuff. I love the high that comes from buying something that's new, that's shiny, that's exciting. I love that feeling of being able to say this thing is mine, that possession of it. But what I don't love is the regret that comes quite soon after the high. I don't love the clutter that comes from just having so many things that I purchased. And I don't love how my bank account is much lower than it otherwise would have been. And for things that often I'm not even using regularly even one month after purchasing them. So I've known this about myself for a while, but I've never done anything. This year is going to be the year that that changes. Most of these items that I end up regretting are things that I buy on a whim, whether it's a well-placed ad, a friend talking about the thing that they bought and how much they enjoy it. And pretty soon after I would see either one of those, I'll hit purchase and then I'll be on my merry way. But this year, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna implement a 24 hour buffer period, kind of a cool off period there, where from the time that I want to buy something, I need to wait a full 24 hours before I decide to actually purchase it. And the caveat to this too, is that in that time, I'm not allowed to look up reviews, I'm not allowed to look up testimonials, because so often, those are just going to sway me to be able to buy that, or they're gonna sway me to want to buy that item even more. So if I look up a review or something like that, the timer resets, and the full 24 hours has to be not even thinking about that item. So I really think that this one's going to help. I'll report back on it later. The sixth change is that I'm going to start having 30 minutes of purposeful silence every single day. From the moment that I wake up, I am surrounded by noise. Now, some of this is outside of my control. Maybe it's the cars that are going on outside. It's a plane that's flying in the sky. It's those sorts of things in the environment that are just there. But a lot of the noise is self-imposed. I'll put in headphones pretty soon after waking up to be able to put in some music to pump me up for the day. Or as I'm driving to the gym, I'm going to be listening to an audiobook, listening to a podcast. So much noise, so much information that I'm putting into my body. And at times that's really, really good. I think that there is magic in some of the music where it, it can elevate a mood, it can elevate our energy at times. However, it doesn't need to be there the entire day especially whenever I'm working or in different time periods, I think that I'm getting more and more drained because I'm just taking in so much information without giving my mind any sort of break, without being able to have any time to process that information. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start implementing 30 minutes where there's no music, there's no audiobooks, there's no podcast, there's no calling friends, it's just being in silence. This could be sitting right here in my room, like on the floor doing a meditation, it could also just be walking around outside, doing some sort of exercise where I'm not taking in any of that information. But essentially the point of this is to just give my mind a little bit of a break. In the same way that I can't just keep working out my body without giving it rest to be able to recover, that same principle I believe applies to my mind. And I think that by implementing this, I'll be able to actually bring back some more energy or keep some more energy for me to be more effective actually in the rest of the day. So 30 minutes, purposeful silence every single day. Number seven is that I'm going to stop drinking coffee every single day. Now, I didn't actually start drinking coffee regularly until 2020. Before then, I loved the smell of it, but I absolutely hated the taste. I just couldn't take the bitterness. However, people said that it was an acquired taste, so I decided one day I was just going to keep drinking the coffee until I started to actually enjoy it. And now I'm in a place where I genuinely do. At times I'll drink lattes, but most of the time I'll just drink my coffee black. But here's the new concern that I have. Now I'm concerned that I'm going to become dependent on needing that caffeine in order to get through my days. And that's definitely not a place that I want to be in. So only three days a week will I be able to drink the equivalent of two cups of coffee. And both of those will have to be finished before 1 p.m. because I also don't want my sleep to be negatively affected by the caffeine that's still in my system. 
In addition to this, if I get my sleep right, which is something that I'm gonna to get to later on in this list, I shouldn't need the caffeine in order to feel energized, in order to feel alive. So with those cups of coffee, the idea behind that as well is that it's not for the caffeine that I'm going to be drinking it, because I, but it, because I genuinely enjoy the drink itself. So this one should be a fun one. Number eight is that I'm going to start running three times a week. Earlier this year, I started jump roping because though I felt like I looked relatively fit from lifting weight, I was a bit worried that I wasn't taking care of my heart in the proper way. I wasn't really pushing my cardiovascular system properly. Now, it's been over 100 days of jump roping on average 30 minutes a day, which has been so cool. I feel so much better, and in addition, jump roping is so fun. I could not recommend it more. You feel super awkward at the start, but by the time that you really get going, it's honestly the most fun activity. However, I'm still a little bit concerned that my heart health and my just cardiovascular system is not really where exactly it should be. So what I wanna do is I wanna challenge it in a different way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be running one mile, a, one mile a day, one mile a day, three times a week. Kind of similar to the vegetables, it's a pretty manageable goal. Nothing super extreme, but I think it's something that will get me started on this process and help me to build this momentum. Now, I'll be honest, I actually despise running. I have since the time that I was a kid. So there's two reasons why I want to add this in particular to my routine. The first is that I wanna to prove to myself that even though there's an activity that I don't enjoy, that I know is objectively good for me, I can go forth and do that activity. It's I can sacrifice my current comfort, my short-term comfort for what I know will be longer-term gain. And the second is to be able to see if by doing something regularly, I can start to find a love of it. I'm actually pretty nervous about this one, if I'm completely honest, but we'll see how it goes. The ninth change is to stop using my iPhone and my iPad while in bed. The sleep experts, they talk about how the bed should only be used for two activities, for sleeping and for sex. And as I shouldn't be using my phone or my iPad during those activities, there's no reason for me to have them in what I consider to be my sleeping burrito. I consider my bed like a sleeping burrito because if you make your bed and you slip into it, it's like you're getting into what I imagine to be like a warm burrito. So this one is pretty cut and dry. Don't use my devices while in my sleeping burrito. So that actually leads me to number 10. The 10th change is that I'm going to start implementing my sleeping routine and start off that wind down routine by 8 p.m. at the absolute latest. Now, there's all these sorts of studies or these, these ideas about the benefits of waking up early. And admittedly, I am somebody who genuinely enjoys getting up early. I love those quiet hours. I love the peaceful hours where there's no distractions from the world. And I feel as though time goes so much slower during those periods. But in the past, I've been so focused on the morning part of it. And I suppose that that's because it's not as cool to say, I'm going to go to bed by 8 p.m. versus saying, I'm going to wake up by 4 a.m even though those two are so interrelated. So this year, I'm shifting the focus. I'm not going to focus on what do I do exactly whenever I wake up, but instead I'm gonna focus on what am I doing to prepare for that time where I wake up. If I take care of this evening routine, the morning, the early wake up will take care of itself. That is what my focus is going to be when it comes to sleep next year. The 11th change is that I'm going to stop being on social media for more than 30 minutes a day. Now, I'm not running a business on social media. I don't have a large following on social media. There's really no reason that I can think of that I would need to spend more than 30 minutes scrolling through information that more often than not, I actually forget by later that day. And actually, I'm kind of curious, what is the amount of days that we spend on social media? So 30 minutes a day, 365 days a year, 10,950 minutes, it's 182 hours. Wow, that's 7.6 days, 7.6 days of, so, of being on social media. If that's only 30 minutes a day, and I know for a fact that I spend more than 30 minutes a day, so whenever you take it over the course of the year, that's time that's being spent on information that so quickly is just gone. There's nothing meaningful that comes from that. So I'm just gonna cut it off there. I'm just gonna say 30 minutes, that's it. Maybe I'll have to reassess later on in the year. Maybe something happens and I actually need to be on there more, but I don't really foresee that at this point. I'm gonna channel the energy that I had from uh, the challenge that I had with my friends Ruri and Izzy. You can see the video somewhere up here where we abstain from social media. And just remembering how much I was able to get done in that period, 
now take that over the course of the year and there's a lot, a lot there. So no more than 30 minutes a day, cut and dry. That one should be simple, not easy, but simple. The 12th change is that I'm going to start writing book summaries. I read a decent amount. There are plenty of people who read more than me, but on average, I consume about 50 to 75 books over the course of the year. I will note that in that count, I do count rereads. So if I read a book twice or three times over the course of the year, I'm going to count that two or three times into my count. And the reason for that is because it's not about the quantity of the types of books that we read, it's about the quality of the reading itself. And so on that note, what I've realized, maybe this is the reason that I need some of those rereads is because I'm not doing anything with the information. And so since I'm not doing anything with the information, I pretty quickly forget it after reading. So following the example of some of my favorite thinkers or the people that I really look up to intellectually, I'm going to start summarizing the books or at least the ones that I think are worth remembering. If for whatever reason you're interested, I actually just started a newsletter. So the link will be down in the description below um, for these book summaries. Just maybe a way to keep them accountable. Maybe it's just a pretty easy way to be able to keep them all in one place. So the first one should be going out this Sunday and my goal is to be able to put out at least one of those every single week. With that, other people can be able to access this information, but also I'm gonna be able to review it myself. So I'll have those key points, I'll have those ideas, and going through the process of actually summarizing my thoughts on a thing will further solidify it in my brain so that maybe I don't have to read something two, three, four times to be able to really get all the benefits. And if you do have any recommendations, feel free to put them down in the comments below. I can't promise that I'm necessarily going to read them, but I do love hearing about those different books that people say changed their lives. And there have been plenty that I've picked up from friends that absolutely have changed my life as well. So if you put something in there, thank you so, so much. And finally, the 13th change is that I'm going to stop comparing myself to others. This one is easily the most vague and also probably the most difficult. So the action items that I have on this, they're not really that concrete. I think it's gonna be one where I figure it out, I iterate as I go. Comparing myself to others, probably like many other people, is something that I've done throughout my entire life. Whether it's comparing the skills that I would have to be able to make a particular soccer team, or it's comparing myself to my peers whenever it came to violin competitions, or even in school, whenever it comes to grades and our class rank, things like that. I've always been very hierarchical in that thinking there. But as I've become an adult, I've realized like how silly that is overall because maybe we had those metrics before, those more set structures, but in today's day and age, or maybe just in general as being an adult, there's just so many paths we can do go down. We're all playing these different games. And also maybe even more importantly in that, we all have such different backgrounds, such different places where we're even starting. So comparing myself to another person, whether thinking myself better or thinking myself worse is really quite pointless. And not just pointless, actually quite detrimental. So a tool or a framework that I think that I'm gonna start using for this is whenever I feel this jealousy or I feel this need to compare to somebody else, just one, think about if I was in their shoes and by being in their shoes, not just the situation where they're standing right now, but every other part of their life from the time that they were born up until that moment, would I be that much different? And I think whenever I think about that, I think whenever I think, the answer is almost certainly no. I'm not gonna be materially different from the position that they're in for better or for worse. And when it comes to the jealousy bit, instead of asking, oh, what would it be like to be in that position? What would it be like to have what they have? Instead asking myself this question, what's the cost of having what they have? And if I don't know, a lot of the time I can just ask. I can ask, hey, what did it actually take? What are the hours you truly put in? What are the sacrifices that you had to make? because in those, I then can make a decision for myself. So it's no longer this comparison game, it's no longer this jealousy, that jealousy actually turns to admiration. So I'm not entirely sure that that made sense. This one, this last point, number 13, is definitely the most muddled in my head, but I think that it's one that if I keep the focus, keep the focus on don't compare, stop comparing there, allow that comparison to flow off. Like whenever you're meditating, have it be an idea that just floats off. I think day by day, I can really make a big difference in my mindset so that whenever I'm sitting down, maybe in front of the camera at this time next year, I'll be able to really say with peace in my heart and know truly that I'm playing my own game. I'm not competing against anybody else for numbers, whether it's metrics of subscribers or watch time, whether it's the amount of money that we make, whether it's a title that we have at a particular company, just being able to let that go and truly run my own race. 
So that's it. Those are the 13 ways, uh, my 13 resolutions, 13 ways that I'm going to change my life in 2022, except to start them right now, instead of waiting till January 1st. And do you have resolutions? Do you like New Year's resolutions? Do you have any that are set up? I would love to be able to hear from you, like whether it's down in the comments or reach out to me in any other way that you know how to reach me. I want to be able to hear those and be inspired by the changes that you all are planning to or have already made for yourselves up until this point. And if this sort of content vibes with you, I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button for more so we continue this journey together. Either way, I'm sending you so, so much love, my friends. I hope that today you have the best day ever. All right, bye now.